Hello everyone, I'd like to take some time to talk about the mathematical description of standing waves. So the kind of standing waves we're going to be talking about are the superposition of two sinusoidal traveling waves. So let's draw those. Imagine we have one wave and it's traveling to the right. And I have another wave that's identical to it traveling to the left. So we can describe these waves mathematically as d1, x of t, and what's important is that both of these waves are identical to each other. In every way, they have the same wavelength, they have the same frequency. Because they have those same things, they're traveling at the same speed, but with one key difference. The key difference being they are traveling in opposite directions of each other. So here I have my two oppositely traveling waves. So one thing that's going to be important for us to remember is this trig identity. So let's remember sine of alpha, which is just some angle, plus sine of beta, which is just some other angle, is equal to 2 sine alpha plus beta over 2 times cosine alpha minus beta over 2. Okay. So this trig identity, if you don't know it, like look it up or something, but it's going to be important in our derivation here. So superposition, the idea of superposition gives superposition, says that my total dx of t is equal to d1 x of t plus d2 x of t. Right, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out what does the amplitude look like if we have a wave traveling this way and a wave traveling this way that are identical to each other in any every way except how they're the direction they're going in okay so let's let's actually put this in so let's keep our trig identity there and i'm actually just going to move all this to the side to give myself a ton of room so this is equal to a times my one wave kx minus omega t, it's traveling to the right, plus sine kx plus omega t, traveling to the left. So just factored out the a from there. Okay, and what is this equal to? Well, this is equal to, if I just look at the top here, right? So, so this here is my alpha, and this here is my beta, okay? So this is equal to a, and what do I have? 2 sine alpha plus beta over 2. So that's kx minus omega t plus kx plus omega t divided by 2 times cosine. I'm going to give myself even more room here because this is how physics works. It gets... Everything gets big and ugly, and then it gets simple again. Cosine of alpha, so it's kx minus omega t, minus kx plus omega t, divided by 2. Okay, so what does this give? This gives 2a to begin with. And what do I see happens here? I see that I get kx plus kx, but then minus omega t plus omega t. So parts of those cancel out. So I get sine of kx, two of them divided by two, times cosine, and what do I get here? I get kx minus kx, so those cancel out. But then I get minus omega t minus omega t. So I get minus two omega t over two. So I get d d of x and t is equal to 2a sine kx times cosine omega t. What I've done here is I've used the fact that cosine is an even function to just say that cosine of a, of a negative value is cosine of the positive value. And this is our equation. This is our important equation. Let's put a box around it. Also, let's just uh, just put it down here because we're gonna we want to try to put a 
a meaning to this equation. Okay, so what does this mean? So what does this mean? This equation has two pieces to it. What, one of the things that we notice is that, here, let's get, just get rid of this box. One of the things we notice is that this is spatial. And this has to do with time, temporal, I guess, but I'll call it time. So if I actually draw this, so let's actually draw a snapshot diagram of what this is. So we've got some wave, that's a sine wave, right? It keeps going. <clears throat> and so there's a piece of it that has to do with the spatial extent, right? We know that this distance here is lambda, which is related to k, right? But there's also a temporal piece. A temporal piece tells us that, oh, well, okay, all of these pieces are like this, but at every single point, it's still, the line is still oscillating back and forth and up and down, right? So we're told that, well, at this point, there's a particle going up and down, and it's going up and down with some period or some angular frequency, right? So this wave isn't moving to the left or right. It's stationary, which is why we call it a standing wave. And its amplitude is given by, by this part as a function of position, right? So always at this point, it's always equal to zero. At this point, uh, it's always going to be oscillating back and forth. So this is a, has a special name. So these spatial things have a special name. So this is called a node. And where it oscillates at its maximum, right here, this is called an anti node. So I think a really good idea would be to go and take, check out some of the animations on this just to see what it looks like in life moving up and down.